<laughs> oh boy. First impressions? Wow. She's a beaut. El Camino by Chevrolet. Exciting, good looking, and elegant. All right, good luck. All right, see you in a bit. Alrighty, welcome to another video. This one on a 1974 El Camino that's been sitting for around 20 some odd years. Uh, we're here in Apache Junction, about 30 minutes east of Phoenix, Arizona, and the, the landscape around here, just behind the camera, is absolutely spectacular. So Jen just dropped me off here with some odds and ends tools we picked up today. Check out my new tool bag, Mary Kay. Oh yeah, a uh, yeah, 20 liter steel gas tank, $60 value ever start or never start battery and well i got this beautiful gem right here so we've we seen her on the facebook marketplace pretty reasonable price and he was negotiable uh, the best part is he was willing to let me work on it here i'm told it hasn't been on the road for about 20 some odd years but you know once we dig in we'll we'll be able to maybe verify that he does have a title for it and we're hoping to get this running driving and maybe take it down to the duct tape drags in tucson arizona where uh Freiburger is hosting that event though so let's uh let's start with a little tour i think i pretty much told you everything you need to know she has got a beautiful desert finish on her oh man you can't buy that kind of paint job whoo definitely gonna need some tires on here <laughs> that's uh the sidewalls you could just dig your finger into that look at that it's about to blow out my face i see it right through the belts before we jump into the tour let's go see what we got i did have a couple things sent out because i, I know for sure it doesn't have a fuel tank so right over here i had some packages shipped and oh yeah we got a top quality ebay special fuel cell some fittings fuel hose pump and a master cylinder now I, I got a universal tank because if this one doesn't work out there's a few other rigs in town that we well not too far away that we might take a peek at but really cross my fingers uh, what, what else i do know about this is that the engine rotates freely and he did have it fired up on some starting fluid spitting and sputtering so i'm feeling pretty confident he's he's told that I just got a 350 motor and it was bored 30 over and uh, yeah. I'm just taking a moment to soak this in right now. I've, I've always wanted to own an El Camino and when I showed one to Jen, she was like, I love it. Now this isn't the, the best one in the area out here. There was certainly, like, if you spend five, six grand, you can get a sweet rust-free El Camino out here based on what I was seeing. But uh, yeah, I'm just, I'm stoked for this one. This one has spoken to me. So starting at the back, check out those lines. Beautiful taillights, rust-free bumper. And I might need to get some closed toe shoes on at some point because there's red ants all over the ground. Uh, so we got a hitch on this thing, which is great to see. Made in USA, little uh, four pin that you'll never find a connection for. And an Arizona plate, looks like last registered September 2001. So yeah, about 20 years since it was on the road. Doesn't mean that's how long it's been since it ran. Uh, let's, uh, I mean, look at the body on this, guys. That is really straight so far from what i'm seeing yeah we got some some rust holes so i guess it's not been a desert car its whole life yeah, yeah. okay a little cancer how about the back tire this tire is actually in nice shape 205 75 14 it's a trailer tire though hmm. the cap one it seems to be in incredible condition and that was one of the things that really stood out to me because you know for our trip sake like this is gonna really come in handy so nice fiberglass cap with vents and windows that can open. We might even be able to camp in that, I'm sure. We'll ride here for the doors open, right? Yes, we'll go into there soon though. Oh yeah, some, some rot coming through up here. So this is by no, no means a perfect vehicle. We're just hoping to get it running and going. Uh, yep, sweeping across the front. That bumper's also in really nice condition. It's got the, the metal grill on it. Everything's plastic these days, you know. Hopefully that tour, you know, spinning around shows you a couple things. We'll dive underneath here shortly. I guess let's let's jump on the interior. Man, this uh, weather stripping's beyond rotted. I mean, that is crusty. I guess that's what you get out in the desert, though. Uh, so somebody's got the door panels off, but these are not. You know, they're not rusted through on the bottoms. I mean, not even bubbling on the outside. Uh, seat's not bolted down. <laughs> oh, I love this. This is great. Couple, couple holes in the floor. Nothing a floor mat won't take care of. 
We've got keys, which are in the on position. I assume that means no battery. And they come out, well, that's pretty normal. The Monte Carlo did that too, where they would just come out. Oh, somebody kept the, the dash covered up. So that's beautiful. We got an AM FM with a tape deck. So this is a major upgrade from the 74 Torino that just had the, the Torino Elite uh, that just had the AM. Let's see if these windows go down. I don't need that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Let some air in here. And as far as stink, I mean nothing. It's not musty. No stinks at all. Definitely needs a headliner, but it's not in the worst shape. I'm sure once we start going down the road, this will get shredded apart. Uh, oh, we got factory air in this, guys. Nice action on the controls. Beautiful. Turn the blower off. I always turn the key on and then just get blasted in the face with like, you know, 10 year old dust or whatever the case. This seat's kind of nice, it's like a rocking chair. Let's see if the gas pedal's locked up. Nope, brake pedal. Mm. I can't tell. And the door opens from the inside. 87,983 miles on her. Pretty basic cluster. And is that, was that ever even a clock or they just left it out completely? I don't, looks like they never even turned it into a clock. Massive ashtray on this. This thing, uh, not too used and abused. It's got cigarette lighter in it. Can't wait to try that out. Let's see if it's been used. Oh yeah, it's been heavily used. But that's, uh, it's like some of these cars have little mini ashtrays, not that I even smoke. Glove box. Oh, we got some paperwork. We've got a 2001 registration from John Yates, $20.08. A recommended tire size and pressure card. Some other odds and ends notes here. We got a new battery in 1991. Look at that. Carb in, in 2000, actually. 311 2000. Oh, it's always nice to have some history. And look what else I was just sitting on 74 El Camino. Oh, we got a ton of maintenance and records, so I'll have to go through this later in the trip. It looks like you even got a uh, owner's manual in there. Very cool. Little memo book with a bunch of, well, a bunch of, there it is. Yeah, this thing was maintained, guys. Check that out. Front end bushings. I mean, this is, this is great. Ah, this guy was just like me. I keep meticulous records of all my vehicles. Nothing else behind the seat. Missing the spare tire and jack. A little storage compartment on that side, which is empty. Let's check out the bed and then we'll tear in under the hood. This is unlocked and locks if need be. A key. Oh, there might be a key. Oh, check that out. This, instead of the gas struts, this has got little springs in it. I like, because those will, you know, I mean, come on, you guys know there's gas struts after like a year or two, they fail and don't work anymore. No, oh, let's try it. Tailgate. No, it doesn't. Doesn't latch, so we'll have to look into that. I just need a little lead on these, I'm sure. Ooh, I'm getting red ants on me again, guys. They're climbing up. Alrighty, well, this is this is a nice shape. I feel com confident enough to, to stand on it. It's not all rotted out on the seam or anything. So, got an air cleaner. Nice, love me, a factory air cleaner, air box, whatever you want to call it. Some skins. Nice, we've got some interior parts. Not that I put them on the nose. We have a Chilton's manual, 68 to 77 Chevrolet repair and tune up guide. This is old. This has got to be for like in the 70s or 80s. Copyright 1977. Oh, and we do have a newer Chilton book on it too. Very cool. Tire tube. It's going to come in handy. And really a box full of a bunch of odds and ends parts. Uh, looks like an oil catch can of sorts or vacuum canister. I'm not sure. You guys probably know better than me since you know, I'm a, a young buck. Spare headlight. Yeah, we're going to have to go through this whole uh, parts bin later. But we definitely have some good usable parts in here. We got lifters. Hydraulic lifters. Maybe it's got a cam in it. And another bucket of parts that we'll have to go through. And for now, I'm gonna scoot on out of here because this paint is flaking off and it's probably lead paint that I'm breathing in. But I think this seems like we could definitely make it into a nice home in here. Not great overhead. Let's check her out under the hood. Had some nice action on those hinges and we are looking pretty darn clean in here, guys. 
So we got XZ 350 to 400 cubic inch two barrel factory airs all in. Yes, everything's intact. Got a belt on there. Oh man, are we just lucky or what? I don't know what it is with these cars because again i looked at just a few pictures and like i just i just feel like we're lucking out so far no no way any freeze up in there it's I never have to worry about moisture in these yeah bone dry distributor there looks somewhat fresh let's take a peek inside the red oh yeah we got green coolant maybe oh, i don't know a couple inches down so we'll leave that be the reservoir tank you know that's needs a new one of those motor oil very clean and just over the full mark. Makes sense. He's had like no miles since this guy was driving it in 2000. I'm sure he would be happy to know uh, wherever he is. Uh, if you're seeing this video, you know, hopefully he'd be happy to know that this is going to, to some good use because we're not, not going to rehab this car, but we're certainly going to get her going on the road, man. And trans stick. We've got a eh, slightly darker fluid. Well, it's just not red, but it doesn't look too dirty and and smell bad at all. I just noticed the fuel line is cut. Who would have done that and why? Maybe they were planning on adding a fuel filter of sorts. I don't know, but that's kind of a bummer to see. Rad fin, cowl's gonna need some attention before we get cranking on her. No power steering leaks at all on this thing. Look at that, it's dry. And the Delco AC compressor was good in December 16th, 1987. No, so we're good there. Let's take a look at the master cylinder. Always make sure to dust or blow these off a little bit and get the you know, obvious stuff that's going to fall in there off. Or, you know, just open them on up. That looks like a, a newer one. I, I, I uh, bought one just, just in case, you know, because I got Jen coming on the trip. There it comes. Uh, and Gus, and I don't want to put their lives at jeopardy. Uh, yeah, not bad at all. That's actually, geez, I bet you these brakes work fine without anything. I was I'm thinking this is gonna be a lot worse, but power steering fluid. Yeah, we're empty. Guess the pump must be leaking because everything else is dry. And we've checked the basics. Let's go ahead and drop the battery in. Oh, I guess you can't trust the handles on these. Never starts, or at least in the hot desert heat. Which, by the way, it's uh, it's in the high 90s today, which is not bad for this area because normally they're seeing like you know 110, 115. Plus we got partial, partly cloudy, partial uh, cover. You know, it's nice, not direct sun. I really do hate side post terminals. The positive side went smooth, got her snug down, but the negative side, yeah, the threads are worn out and it pulled, pulled through. So hopefully it didn't damage the battery too bad. We'll have to get that at an auto parts store. I was able to get the cable hand started. Let's see if that's enough to crank her a touch. So I'm getting pretty close to a standstill until Jen gets back. Uh, a pretty big list of stuff I'm gonna have to go grab. Let's listen to a crank if she cranks. All right. Oh, that's not a good sound. I got a dead hole, it sounds like. Well, again, he didn't say it ran. He said that it had spit and sputter. But that's not a great sound. It could just be a valve train issue or lifters aren't pumped up yet. But, mm. huh. all right. While I wait for Jen, I'm going to dig through the rest of this bed. I noticed when I opened the gate, check that out. The original pinstriping. That, uh, Red and blue that went down the sides probably looked awesome, or at least I assume it was original. Uh, so we got this little guy. I mean, we I'm gonna hide I'm past over that. She's leaking though. Great, some nice spark plugs. <laughs> uh, okay, so I mean, how is that just full of water, but everything else out here is dry? I noticed all these bolts up here and some kind of access cover. Wondering what's under here in front of the bed. Oh, look at that! Tons of storage. Had no idea. Okay, so that goes into the cab though. Which is, you know, that's nice. Ah, oh, out of the sun too. It's actually much cooler in here than outside, surprisingly. It's white reflecting the sun good. We got the floor mats and oh yeah, my favorite, a bumper jack. Before you use one of these, you should always check out the bumper condition, make sure it's not rusted out. And you know, in that Torino Elite video, you guys gave me a lot of heat for getting under there and, and uh, using this without jack in. Not a good idea, don't do that, ever. Look at that. 
Works like a charm. Do a little shake down on the front end, nice and tight. Brakes aren't locked up. And just taking a quick peek without actually getting underneath. I'm just sticking my arms under here. That's what we're looking like. Square bar links are in good shape. No major leaks that I see running down. Exhaust is all there. Oh boy, I really hope this motor is not blown. Passenger side is good as well, nice and tight. Hey baby. Hi, how are you making out? <laughs> not great. He's got a little compression on the cylinder. How's Gus doing? He's good, he barked in Walmart, I had to leave. No, <laughs> bad boy. I gotta go run him somewhere, get him worn out. Parts run. Oh, look at this GTO over here. Mm. You should be buying that. No, it's a bottle though, I'm sorry. Well, would you look at that? Nice El Camino, man. Thank you. Is this like a 70 or? 68. 68, beautiful, man. Love it. I'm gonna get something to shut this guy up. <laughs> what do you think of that, guys? Stopping back at home base. We got a little cabin here at the Mesa KOA. Cute little cabin. Then got us a crate for how much was it? $6.49. $6.49 from thrift store. I love reusing other people's trash. The best. Home sweet home. No bathroom or shower in here, but you know they got community showers right over there. So pretty chill. He wants his new toy. Oh, that'll keep him busy for a little while. <laughs> a little break on the rocking chair, front porch. Got a beautiful view. And we're back, ready to put some fuel to that carb, hopefully fire up. I got a repair kit for the terminals and the battery. Yep, that'll do the trick. Add some power steering fluid in there so we don't run that dry. They've got us rigged up with the jerry can fuel pump, jump pack. I don't have any wire to run that to the battery. But before we send fuel to that carb, let's just listen to this crank one more time. Yeah, so to me that sounds like low compression on a cylinder, but you know, that's it, how the Torino sounded too, and then it came back to life. So let's, let's give her some fuel, see if it fires up. Always a good idea to tap the carb too, in case the float might just be stuck. But uh, yeah, we're not dumping in there past the float, so that's good. Go ahead and give her a little prime shot. And let's see if she starts. There it is. Will it idle? Will it idle? After it runs that junk fuel. Definitely not hitting all eight there. Okay. I'm assuming we probably need to do a carburetor clean, but you know, we always go bare minimum. Oh, horn works on it. Nice sticky steering wheel. Uh, let's see if the pumper works. If I hit this throttle a bunch of times and it fires back up, that means our pumper is working in the car. Oh yeah. Yep, I can actually hear, this is the accelerator pump. And, oh, now I see it shooting a little stream out. Let's try doing the spit shine carb clean on it. We gotta take that carb apart, see what's going on in there. Not gonna lie, the heat today is making me, I wanna just call it quits till this evening. Maybe go for a swim in the pool with Jen. But we gotta, we gotta get this thing running because we're on a time crunch. Here we go. And I can fold this guy off. That's on the second. You know what? I'll just fold that away. Yeah, she's pretty crusty in there. Should have brought a carburetor kit. Luckily, the gasket only tore in one place, so if we can't find a carb kit for this today, you know, we can work with that. Just glue it back. And the needles in there, real gummed up and sludgy. And then inside the carb, here's how we're looking. You see this main jet and that main jet completely blocked up. Kind of gives you a good idea how long it's been sitting. You know, it's, it's pretty sludged up. So I'll pull those out, do a quick spit shine, get this thing back together, and I think it'll run pretty minty. I got Jen and the Gus Man over here visiting. 
What do you think? You want to get clean on, or what? Uh, what's? What do you um, think? I'm only going to start cleaning it if it's actually going to run and dry. All right. Well, we will be there in a few minutes. All right. We don't have to worry about Gus chewing up any carpets in this one. No. <laughs> Just bolt down the seat. We're good to go. They kind of have a seat when they fold forward. They they lean over diagonally. You yeah. See that? So it's easier to well to get to the back, not get in the back. Damn, babe, you're like in there. Yes. That's what you gotta do when you're not familiar. I'm not familiar with this Rochester at all. Well, that didn't work. I went to put that cap back on. The little piece just kind of broke into bits. It's like we're going into town to get a carburetor kit. Yep, O'Reilly said they have two in stock. Hopefully one of them fits because, yeah, this gasket is just completely dry and torn, as you might expect. Since this one was brittle and broke right here, you know, I was going to put silicone and then glue it back into place, but but I kind of flubbed that when I was putting it back on. Uh, and, and if you just siliconed this whole thing, it wouldn't last because you have fuel passing through these. I mean, you could in worst case. But we... well, it took a bunch of running around, but two stores later, we got the right carburetor kit at Walker. Uh, it turns out the carb on this is from 1980 and later so it's probably had a motor swap at some point or another. And Jen has wandered off to the dollar store. You ready baby? You scared me. <laughs> what you getting? Some dollar store utensils? Yeah. Some snacks? <laughs> Now we're talking, sun's starting to set, and it is a beautiful temperature out. And hang out here all night. Guys, quick break. Want to thank the sponsor of this video, Upside. I'm sitting here in the motel doing some video editing, and I'm thinking, darn, this is going to cost a lot of gas money getting all the way back to Philadelphia. Guzzling gas. So how can we help offset that or offset inflation in general? Well, one good app that's free to use is Upside. You can download it on your phone, and all you do is when you're... You know, you're getting ready to go buy some gas, you can look up the closest station. So right now here in Arizona, there's a Circle K, 477 a gallon after the 12 cents a gallon savings. And I did a hop on another gas app I want to show you. And the only other station around is 549. So that Circle K has 489 as their deal, but I can save 12 cents a gallon back on that. So the way it works is when you go in, you, you check in on the app and you pay with your credit card or debit card like usual. And it just takes within like the next day or so, you get the cash back in the app. You know, it's been working great for us, but don't take my word for it. Download the free Upside app, which I'll drop a link to down below and use promo code WNKH. And that'll get you $5 or more cash back on your first purchase of $10 or more. So again, a huge shout out to Upside for sponsoring this video. And now let's jump back into it. About an hour later, it's all together. Somehow I lost the spring for the accelerator pump and spent way too much time looking for that. But let's see how it fires up now. Clanky up there. Well, as you guys heard, these valves are pretty noisy, even after it's warmed up a little bit. So next step would be taking the valve covers off. Let's see if we can't see in here. Oh! Yeah, that one's loose. Oh man, I just kicked that one off the pedestal actually. That's how loose it is. Look at that. Now it's just flopping in the wind. Um, mm. Let's see if I can get it back on. <laughs> So, uh, so uh, yeah, valve covers come off, or we just throw some mystery marvel in there, let it warm up a little bit more, and cross our fingers that the uh, lifters just unstick themselves. These have hydraulic lifters in there a lot of time. To... Well, let me show you. Had those ones in here, and so here's what it looks like. This part rides on the camshaft in there, and they can get seized in the bore, or the uh, little plunger in here can get seized inside too. And the you know the oil pressure comes in from the side right here to pump up that plunger. 
So, I'm thinking we'll just run it some more with Mystery Marvel in there and hope for the best. Sneak this cover out of here. Bunch of junk in the way. All right, there she goes. Now this is the one that I just kind of bumped with my finger and it came off and then I couldn't I couldn't get it back on with my finger inside there. So now it's back on, but you see how it's just collapsed. That's that's not normal. If we kept running it like that, it would end up bending the uh, push rod or damaging the camera, or what have you. Is it, was this one pretty noisy? Did you hear it? Babe, I don't know. And I was calling this a stuck lifter and it certainly seems to be just a collapsed lifter because uh, I saw it going up and down and all that. So what I'm going to do now is just, uh, I'm going to tighten it down to zero lash just because if we leave this alone, it's it's going to cause damage. Um, but we're going to have to recheck on it. So assuming these were set right before, you know, we'll just count how many turns we go down to zero lash and then take a look at this in the future. That's going to be quarter, half, three quarter, one. That's one full turn, it's still loose. That's two and a quarter, two and a half, and we're almost at zero lash. So this might be a bad idea, but at least now it should be a little quieter. Let's see what it sounds like. We're moving up and down a bunch, this one, right? Um, go ahead, do it again. Which one, the first or the second? Second one from the back. It's going up and down, right? When I crank it? Just like the rest. Yes. Okay, great. We'll leave that a little bit loose, like so. We got another noisy lifter on this side, but a lot quieter now. It's gonna be smoky over there with the oil we spilled. What was that? It was like a chugga 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 chugga. It was dieseling. Light check. Oh, they work. They look good. Well, look at that sexy that beast. How about tail lights? Oh yeah, I got some tail lights. Well, on one side anyway. Yeah. Side note, we were just checking out the emblem on here though, and it says Spirit of America. So I was just looking up Im images of them, and yeah, sure enough, this is the Spirit of America edition, which looks pretty pretty dope. I wonder if that brings more value to it or not. I did go ahead and pull this filter off, and uh, it's clean on the inside, so because you guys remember we had a problem with these on the last trip. Now this this one's much bigger though. So we'll be good. What you doing there? What you asked me to do? Tightening down some lug nuts? Yes, sir. It's hanging out down here in the rattlesnake nest. There's a bunch of holes up there. Um, but they don't seem to be bothering me if they are around. I got the old fuel tank straps tied up and check it out. Pretty darn rust free under here. I mean, guys, this is this is just a little bit of surface rust on it. Uh, so I am gonna, I, we put the fuel cell in the bed and I'm running this line. I'm gonna tag it into the hard line going up front. And yeah, we do have a little differential leak. You see it's been making kind of a pull there. So we'll have to check that before we go really ripping on her. We got the fuel cell all hooked up and we're gonna go ahead and see if that old fuel pump still works. So I got Jen has a hose going into here off the, the line that was cut. There it is. What'd you find there? I will mine this man. <laughs> oh my gosh. Are you serious? You found a bone on, on no, what is not a bone, it's just a piece of plastic. At the, he found that in the hole though. Yeah. Wow. This moth has really taken a liking to me. Or the light. It's probably the light. The next morning we are gonna grab some breakfast at Toast Geo's and then go get back to work. Well, since you guys are always asking for food pictures, big thumbs up for this place. Look at that salad. Delicious. Definitely dropping a five-star review here. 
And so we're back over here working on it. I think the attack plan today is gonna be, I'm gonna start with just a quick compression check, see what we're at. And then I was thinking about the, uh, ooh, just broke that spark plug coming out. Here's a look at the spark plugs though. Pretty, pretty crusty and junky. Of course I broke that one. It's got a set of R45TS in it. Now I was thinking about the, the valve clearance issue and I bet you any money that the cam in this has probably got some wiped out lobes on it. Cause with these, the flat tappet cams there, they don't break in right, they are, they're just done for. Uh, oh, we're leaking some coolant down here too. Where's that coming from? Off the water pump. When we had the valve cover off, we did see that one with all the play rocking back and forth, but that doesn't mean everything. I mean, it could just be worn down a little bit and you need a dial indicator to really check it. I uh, have Jen crank it. We're starting on cylinder number one. All right, we got 140. Crank it. All right. Same thing, 140, that's cylinder number three. 140 on number five. And number seven, 130. So that's good, that's the one that we had the valve problem on. That means that cam is working. Uh, don't know if it's a terrible idea that we crank down the lash though. If it comes back to life, it could be catastrophic if the lifter comes back to life. Number two, all right, 140. Number four. All right, a little bit lower on that one. We're about 110. Number six. All right, 130. Number eight. Oh, nothing on the needle. But when we take this off, go ahead and crank it. It's, it's sucking my finger to this real hard. That means that the rings are probably good in the cylinder, but the valves are not opening at all on that back cylinder. Uh, and that means, you know, the cam's probably wiped out, I would assume, but maybe we'll just, you know, maybe it is a, another uh, collapsed lifter. I don't know, but that valve cover's gotta come off. That's, that's one of our big misfires on that side. In case I wasn't too clear on that, you, know, you got two valves in the cylinder head up here. And so if they're not opening at all, it's not gonna be able to build any compression on the gauge. But when I take the gauge off and just have an open hole, you know, that piston's going up and down. So it's trying to suck air in through my finger which it has a very strong suction but it's not able to suck anything in when you put this on there so there's no compression by the way with all that crank and check it out we do have some fuel coming through that pump and it's real uh lots of crud in there so we just cleaned out the uh the line you know, flushed out the line going the hard line from the back to the front all right so we could just take the um, rockers well take the push rods out on the back cylinders that seem to be the problem and drive it like that with dead holes or we could just you know fire it up and try to get it moving see if the brakes work go from there try to hold the seat down that should be good can you give the other side like a little shove Jen got that seat bolted down, plugs are back in, fuel filter in place. We uh, flushed out that line a little bit better. A bunch of crud came out, seems to be clean now. Let's fire it up, see if we can get it to move a little bit and if the brakes work. So when I put it into gear, it just does nothing in any of the gears, no engagement. Well, it could just be that the fluid's super low. This power steering work. Oh yeah, look at that, it's working good. Remember this had fluid on it before, but the pump wasn't running. Yeah, so it's bone dry. We gotta, we're gonna add a quart, see where it's at. I have a feeling it's gonna be several quarts low, but... We need to get more ATF if we wanna determine if that trans is blown or not. You don't have any ATF kicking around, do you? Guys, this is Tony, by the way, the owner. <laughs> What's up, Tony? <laughs> Spirit of America. <laughs> right, Spirit of America. Ooh, you know, little Lucas. Yeah, that works. Fix right. everything. Here. Oh, that stuff's thick, look at that. I don't like it though. Oh yeah. We're gonna have to get some more ATF. We just came back, stopped at the cabin for a little gust, man, because he, we had to leave you this morning so we go get some breakfast. But that's why we, you know, these cabins are convenient because they got AC in them and they're pet friendly. So it's, it's not bad. I'll let the little guy out, go pee, and I guess we'll take you with us for the rest of the day, buddy. We'll go with two quarts. Oh yeah! Oh, 
and the brakes are working. Oh my god. Double check the fluid level, man. We put it in gear and then uh, we're gonna go for a little spin. I'm burning some oil now that it's warming up a bunch. Let's see if that water pump's still leaking. Here we go. Kicking around. Right now. Buckle up there. Will we make it around the block? Spirit of America right here. Ooh. With the sticky steering wheel and all. Yeah, you like that? That's what this fire feels like. Oh, he's We're fired. Rolling. Oh, oh. You tighten that wheel down, right? How's it feel? It feels really bumpy. <laughs> It feels really bad. I feel like we're gonna get a blowout. <laughs> Woo! Spirit of America, baby! Well, that was a good first. Oh! What was that? <laughs> it was just diesel in there that? for a second. The better judgment side of me was thinking we should probably walk on this deal, but Jen seems to be in love with this. I love it. This El Camino, <laughs> so we just pulled the trigger on and gave him the cash. He's grabbing the title now. And next stop is Walmart. We're gonna try to get some hoops on it because these tires, I'm sure, are ready to blow and he needs that trailer tire back. I'll leave the air cleaner off for now. That won't hurt nothing. Walmart's just down the road. We gotta get some gas too. This is the other hoop over here. See that one had a blowout. Let me see the side. Oh yeah, see that's what the rest of these are getting ready to do. You gotta love the desert. There's just something magical about this place. Let's put it right on Jen's seat. Thanks. Sir, cash money yeah, deal, you. possibly the worst purchase of my life. <laughs> oh no. We'll, we'll find out soon. All right, cool. How'd that first ride feel? Not great. We're gonna fill our fuel cell up and then someone had this vented, so we're gonna vent the fuel cell outside somewhere. I did just notice it looks like our cap is not secured at all in the front. Nothing in the back here, and we only have one hook. So that's going to need a ratchet strap or to be addressed. It seems to be... Oh, okay, so it's just kind of sitting on there. You know, it's funny, we were going to put this all the way at the front of the bed, and then I'm like, wait a second, how are we going to fill this if we do that? We got like three miles to the Walmart. Let's cross our fingers, these tires make it. And we've made it. Oh, we're leaking coolant pretty good though. No, wait, maybe that's the, yeah, that's the coolant coming out of there. So it needs a water pump. It turns out the tires they had in stock for this car at Walmart are for trailers. So we found one other place, Big O Tires, uh, that, that, that said they have them, so let's head over. I'm just crossing my fingers. One of these tires doesn't blow out on the front. They are in bad shape and it's hot out today. All right, guys, we made it. So we. Uh, this one I gotta return back to the old owner. He's got it off the pit. Poor little Gus having to deal with rocks everywhere to go to the bathroom. Oh, I got a scrap pile back here. We'll find you some grass soon, buddy. We have a pretty nice stash in here, too. Alloy wheel. Surprised they're able to just leave that out and nobody comes and takes the whole darn trailer. Kind of a cool little trailer, actually. Chris sent me on my own personal mission cooling system repair and some wiper blades and now I'm back to pick up Chris hopefully the tires are on these guys are doing outstanding work cleaning up the rims too getting the rust off of there they said it'd be alright if I took a quick peek at the brakes alright try to do this one handed oh yeah we got some nice riveted shoes in excellent condition not gonna even mess with the dust seals passenger set's got that trailer wheel we gotta save these brakes look amazing. Uh, here's a look at the passenger side front brakes. We got nice meat in there on both sides. Looks almost like newer calipers, excellent condition. It's got the groove on there, which in the 1970 Monte Carlo video, I, I didn't know that was factory. A lot of you guys said that factory style rotors have that. I had no idea. And the driver's side has a different style rotor without the groove, spins freely after driving. Plenty of meat on those pads too, no leaks. Brake hoses look nice. A little bit of dry run on the exterior, but nothing to worry about. Big shout out to these guys at Big O. Got us in at the end of the day. Hand torquing the wheels, the 65 foot pounds. Nothing like some fresh rubber. Unfortunately, they didn't have a matching set of four. We got some custom 428 AS in the back, no name, and then uh, hand cooks in the front, which, you know, hand cooks are a good tire. 
Thanks so much for the great service. You're welcome, young man. Uh, so the next priority is gonna be getting some tail lights on this. Jen's still over at the Walmart. Let's try out the stereo. Nothing. Let's buy this in the speakers or we'll check that for power later. Oh, it already rides so much nicer. sitting down here at the O'Reilly's taking a break and just soaking in this moment the moment that we realized we're actually gonna do it the point of no return this is gonna solve all of our cooling system problems we did pick up a water pump I figure I want to avoid installing that because we might need a cam too and when you do the water pump you're already quarter way there with the cam so away for all that hashtag not sponsored by o'reilly's but they are super friendly and every time i stop in the o'reilly's i have like a hose collection in the back and they're like hey grab what you need so really friendly people here oh oh what you got red I ants got ants all over me red oh. ants out of the gun no. oh yeah here they are so let's take a look at these lights because that's something that's pretty serious pulled over now all right we got good headlights yep and bright oh yeah We've got driver's side marker, front marker, passenger marker, one out right here, passenger rear marker, no tail lights. Brake lights? One. Only one side. Which On side? The, the left. Hopefully we get lucky and it's just a bulb. Clear this debris off. I mean, you know, how lucky could you get now? The filaments are good in that, but maybe just a bad connection. I'll just give it the old back and forth. Yeah. It's real rusted in here. Now we're gonna go see if they have a socket in stock for probably 1157 bulb that is, right? The good news is we found a socket that works for 1157, but it's not the right one. They didn't have the right one in stock. Bad news is I tried retrofitting it into there and I broke the darn taillight itself because it was like paper mache. So now we just gotta kind of jerry rig it in and then we'll have brake lights. I'm gonna tape. Oh, oh that's my head. Gus, I'm gonna tape your mouth shut. I think done so we can move on to the water pump issue. Alright. Yeah, how's it look? Light new. Front side marker was just a bad bulb. And we now have fully functional lights. The last item for tonight is the, the really bad coolant leak. And after getting in there closer, it seems it's just a lower rad hose, which they don't have in stock, but they do have a flex hose. I'm gonna drain that out, get the lower hose on and we good. So we don't have to deal with disposing of the coolant and it's pretty darn green anyway. We're gonna just reuse what's in there. There's a look at the lower hose and you see how much is leaked just sitting here at the O'Reilly. So it's, uh, again, I tried tightening that hose clamp and no matter what, it's still leaking. Hopefully it's the hose, but we need the hose anyway. We got our most of the way drained out, everything out of the pet cock. Oh yeah, look, the spring's all right of the part on the, the lower and I got, it's nothing like hot coolant running down your, your arm. So he had a couple of hoses that might be right, and you can see if you come in close to the camera, this is why this one was leaking. It was pinched, uh, pinched open there. So a little, little slit. We could we could shove it on further and make it work, but again, it's, it's real soft. High flow funnel. Back to camp. Bye. Thank you. <laughs> Going through all these parts and a lot of the stuff we're throwing out, like I'm not gonna put a used sealed beam in there from 20 years ago, the lifters and such, but a lot of it we're keeping. Anything that looks universal, you know, like we got a U joint here, rusted caps and such, but that could could be used in a jam. Cause see, still nice shape on the inside. The rollers are in good shape. This uh fuel. Oh <laughs> Well, we got a spare alternator. I'm just kind of sifting through this because we need all the space we can get in here for our stuff. Hey handsome, how you doing in here? Taking a nap? It was a long day, but we made it back to camp. So enjoy a adult beverage now, and then we might uh, go check out a local, I don't know, restaurant or something. Oh, we're stopping by the Dog Run Saloon. Treatment, guys. 
Well, we've made some good progress, and I think we could wrap up the initial episode. I'm uh, gonna break this into a few different ones, since yeah, I don't even know if we're driving this car home, but the, the next one is we're gonna try to make it down to the duct tape drags, uh, meet Freiburger, hopefully some other cool people, and have a good time, maybe even compete in the race. Uh, so if you wanna see that and more El Camino adventures, then you know, stay tuned, kinda doing a little bit different this time, trying to edit on the trip. Uh, right now I'm just kinda laying under here, staying out of the sun. Uh, so hey, if you're out here in Arizona, you got something interesting for sale, let me know, shoot me an email or whatever, or drop a comment. Uh, not really super committed to driving this, this thing home, but we'll see how it fares and how many other problems it gives us. Uh, or heck, if you got a used 350 motor or a cam and lifters and I don't know, you wanna help us out, with a decent place to put that in, let me know. I mean, one way or another, we're gonna look into the valve train issue, address that, but any input you guys have, always appreciate that in the comments. And I, I suppose we'll end this by just saying, you know, thanks very much for tuning in, if you have. And we'll leave you off with some deleted scenes we didn't use. So thanks again so much for tuning in, and uh, we'll see you in part two. Go into the process of consolidating his personal work. item bag. Now have hoodies on sale. Main jacket. Just tuck those down in there. That is crazy. Well, the second technique is just pack everything in layers in the back here. And you can seal it with your main jacket. Perfect. And the lights on the floor lead to all exits. Please take a moment to locate your nearest exits, keeping in mind they may be behind you. He's such a good little boy right now. Lay over. Airport theories. What do you guys think about this chicken? It's like rubber. <laughs> Suppose you could get tough, rugged durability, economy of operation found in a Chevrolet pickup truck, and the kind of comfort and luxury reminiscent of Monte Carlo, all combined in one vehicle. That would be real value, right?